Okay, so we've built a project and we've made some configurations. We have some routers, uh, some PCs, just two basic networks. Um, and we want to talk about how do we actually save our work and more importantly, how do we collaborate and share our work? So the beauty of this server is it's targetable by multiple uh, users at one time. So in that instance, myself, I could be logged into uh, this actual workspace and somebody else could log into the exact same workspace that wanted to collaborate with me. Um, so that makes things kind of nice. But, you know, if we're on rotating schedules or, you know, one of us wants to put in additional work uh, on the side to figure out a specific problem, then, you know, this is something that uh, we can also share. Um, and especially on the same server, it's uh, uh, it, it's easy to do. Um, there are some restrictions. So GNS3 supports Docker, but on some of the containers, especially when it comes to persistence, um, exporting runs into some bugs. And I, I know that GNS3 has it for action at the, the current time, but let's just, uh, let, let's give this a whirl. So what I have here, uh, I have two cloud service routers running Cisco IOS XE, and then I have two virtual PCs that are running uh, CentOS 7. Um, the beauty of these virtual PCs is you don't have to actually go through a full installation process. It's pretty much a live image that, um, that they have available on a site called osboxes.org, and I'll, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a preview of what they look like. but. Let's just say in this instance, we, we have two networks. We want them to talk to each other. Uh, so let's just test some connectivity real quick. So we have router one. Um, we have two different networks here. One is the uh, local area network, and then one is the uh, network that bridges the two routers together. All right, so same thing over here on, uh, on router two. <clears throat> and our, uh, we only have a static IP route in here, so it's just going to um, it's just going to include that one uh, network to bridge the two local area networks uh, together. So let's see here. All right, great. So let's talk about our our end host now. So here's our two PCs. We have PC one and PC two. Um, you could give it an actual host name as you would do on you know a live CentOS image and you know as you can see this is an actual CentOS VM um, so uh, it, it's it's full usage it's just packaged um, in a in kind of a virtual appliance it just makes it easier when it comes to uh, configuration so all I really want to do um, uh, I have this designed on the 10110 network and then PC2 is on the 10220 network. All right, so let's just make sure we can ping each other. Um, so let's try to ping the opposite host and yep, we got connectivity there. And same thing with PC2, let's try to uh, ping the other side. Uh, oh. What are we doing here? 10.1.2. There we go. All right, so we have connectivity. We're looking good. And uh, so let's, uh, you know, now we're finished for the day. We've saved our work. So we'll just go ahead and uh, power these two VMs down like we would a regular machine. And then we'll go ahead on our routers and we'll save our configurations. The great thing about the virtual routers inside of GNS3 is they are actual live images. All right, so you have to run through the motions and actually save your work as if you were on a live image. So, okay, good, we're done here for the day. Uh, but we wanna save our work. So we're gonna go ahead and power everything off. All right, and now from here, we wanna export a portable project. All right, because um, you know my coworker is not necessarily going to be able to log in to this server for maybe a week, maybe they're on travel, but they want to do some stuff locally, and we want to collaborate on projects. 
So the beauty of that is as long as my coworker has these specific virtual appliances installed on whatever server they're targeting in GNS3, this, this should be able to work no problem. So what we would do is uh, we want to export portable project. We'll pick a path for this. And in this case, we'll just go to the desktop and I'll just name it DW uh, project one, P1. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave everything default. And then from here, we will click finish. And sometimes depending on the size of the project, this could take a while. All right, but in our case, we have a relatively small um, number of devices and appliances running. So it shouldn't really give us too much grief uh, when we're trying to get this working. Um, so I'll go ahead uh, and pause the video just for, for time's sake, and then we'll come back. Okay, so we are back. That didn't actually take long at all, but again, we have a pretty small number of, of uh, appliances. And depending on how crazy you wanna get, you could definitely fill up these workspaces with quite a few um, images, all right? so. Just understand the more images that you have, the um, the larger your project is actually going to be. And if you want to get a glimpse as, as to uh, what kind of resource requirements these PCs in themselves will use, we're running about 8 gigs of RAM using two virtual CPUs. So it's not super, super heavy. All right, but again, this is Doug's project. This is my project here. So this is the one I just exported. And when you export it, on your actual... De uh, destination, it's going to look something like this. In Linux, they actually give you the fun little GNS3 uh, logo. In Windows, that may not be the case, but the big thing is you want to make sure that the extension is a GNS3 project file. Okay, so the way that this would work if, um, let's just say, uh, my coworker wants to, I passed him this file, and um, and as we can see. It's, uh, it's not super big. It's a little big, but not as big as you might expect. Uh, so I've passed it to him or her uh, using a, you know, a share drive or, or whatever the case may be. But they have this file now, and they want to load it into GNS3. So they would simply go to uh, File, Import Portable Project. They would locate where this project is. They would click Open, and then now they could actually label it whatever they want. So... Um, we'll we'll leave it as such, but we can we can name it. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll just name it Co Worker P1. All right. And in this case, we will click OK. And this is going to now take that file and load it into GNS3. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a it's a little large, not too, too bad, but it's enough that it's gonna take you a minute, but look at that, that's how quick this uh, loaded up. So we'll go ahead and fire this up, and I'm going to uh, pause the video for now to let all these uh, devices boot up nice. All right, all of our devices have booted up. Now it's time to see if uh, our configurations have actually saved. So let's look at router one real quick. We'll run a, uh, a quick show APM brief and we can see our interfaces are still configured, which is great. And we still have our static route. What about router two? So interfaces are good and we still have our static route there as well. So how about our PCs? The great thing about these small virtual appliances is they actually maintain uh, their history, just like a, a real regular PC or, or you know virtual machine would. So if we type a, uh, a history command, I've, we can actually see the history uh, <clears throat> as we um, had configured before. So let's go ahead and actually try to uh, uh, test connectivity in our new project that we just imported. So are we able to get to our other side? Yes, we can. Awesome. All right, and then the same thing applies over on PC2. So let's go ahead and try to, here we go. All right, and we have verified connectivity. All right, so that, uh, oh, there we go. So in this case, we can see that we took one project, exported it, and then imported it as a new portable project. 
and all of our configurations stayed the same. So now we can make our changes, whatever they may be, and export the same exact way for me to grab from my coworker and continue to work on from there. Now one thing to note, if you want to see what actual projects are on your server, you can go to the projects library. And in this case, the original project that we had open was this test NGC right here. But when I exported it as Doug Webb or DW Project One, and then imported it and saved it as Coworker Project One, that's now being saved as well. Okay, so uh, for the purposes of not clogging up the server, uh, it's just it's it's on the user themselves to do their work, and when they're finished, uh, they can manually delete these projects so you don't clog up the uh, server and and, and waste uh, space that could be used on other projects. So, um, but that's, that's about it. Uh, we're looking good here. So thank you for your time and I'll see you again.